All right. Well, I'd like to officially welcome everyone to Visualizing COVID-19, Creating Digital Brains for Analysis and Action. This is a brain technology big thinker special presentation, and I'm very pleased to introduce our panel. I'll, st I'll start with my partner in crime, Matt Caton from The Brain. And now I want to move on to our most exciting guests. We have Jerry Mikelski, who's on record as the uh, largest brain creator and a lot of you have browsed jerry's brain away uh, already some of you haven't so uh thank you jerry for joining us we're very excited to to dive into your brain happy to be here and we also have dr mark trexler on uh, uh on the call he is co-creator of climate uh web and has worked uh on a number of intergovernmental panels on climate exchange and and a whole lot of stuff so he's also going to be giving his perspective on uh, his brain. Uh, Mark, uh, nice to see you. Thank you for joining us today. Happy to do it. All right, great. Um, so in terms of the format, uh, we're going to start. Uh, uh, some of you might who are following us on Twitter, getting our newsletters, you might know that all these brains are actually online uh, at thebrain.com slash COVID. Um, or linked right off our ho homepage in the banner ad. Now, you don't have to get them right now, but they are available to you. Um, we've got three brains that represent different perspectives. Um, so the format of this is gonna be about eight minutes for each um, brain. Uh, I'm gonna start off uh, representing the brain technologies with the team brain we created on COVID-19. And then Jerry's gonna come on and present his huge brain that has about 100 times more stuff than our brain. Uh, but, and, that, and that's that's the cool thing about that. And then Mark Trexler has something very different in his very uh, unique and focused mini brain. So what we want to show you in this session is just the wide range of information architecture that is available on complex topics. Um, and obviously, um, you know, this is a very sensitive subject. Uh, at first, when we, uh, we talked about being this webinar, I wasn't even sure if we wanted to, to go there, but then the interesting thing was um, for us, uh, it was, I started this brain just individually because when there's any big world event, what I naturally do is I like to assimilate it in my digital brain. And that's the way that I capture and incarnate my knowledge. And it turned out, a lot of people within our company at the brain were thinking that way so um, it actually this particular brain started off as an individual product um, but then it actually moved to and i'll just go ahead and open the the online menu so you can see a team brain where we had a whole host of people kind of working on it and just kind of as a side note um, whether you are trying to you know, solve your next, uh, you know, prop business problem, or you're really trying to get a handle on what's going on in the world. Um, not only will this help you digest the sea of information that's out there, but, um, you know, it's quite therapeutic and empowering. Uh, I really did find by, you know, I was hearing a lot in the news about different treatments, um, how to flatten curves, things like that. Um, but when I capture it, that really empowers me to then connect it and expand my view. And if I expand my view and increase my insights, then I can uh, act more efficiently. I can do more uh, for myself, for my family, for my community. Um, so to me, that's that's really what this is all about. And that's why we also wanna provide these examples to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So Matt, uh, let me know when I'm about seven minutes into this, just so I can wrap up, because I don't wanna take away any time from our you know our, our main guests. But the timer is <laughs> okay, very good. The whole idea and premise behind the brain is to enable you to organize information the way you naturally think about it. And I'm just going to flip it around because I'm a little old school. So pieces of information in the brain are uh, what we call thoughts. And a thought can represent any type of digital information. So in this particular brain, uh, we've carved out a few sections that we thought were relevant. Um, this brain is available to all of you as a template. So you can actually download it into your installed software and start playing and working with it or deleting sections um, or just using it as a reference. Um, so we've got various areas. So I have, uh, we can browse by region, 
by uh, disease outbreak. Um, there's an interesting section here on flattening the curve. And every time I click on a thought in the brain, it triggers all related pieces of information. So I'm constantly presented what's what's relevant to me. So the top half of the screen, or in you know Mark's case, or depending on how you can configure it, it can be the side. Uh, the side the, is the content area. So in this case, um, we have live links, and this, this was actually a very controversial piece because um, I actually linked. I like linking Twitter feeds into my brain, and a lot of uh, people in the company are like, "Well, I don't know if we should link this because you know we don't know what they're going to be saying about staying at home." But to me, this represented community. So this uh, this piece of content is actually connected to this thought. And as I drill down deeper, every, anything below my active thought is a child or a subcategory, and anything above is the parents. And one of the nice things about the brain, though, is I can make these uh, associative connections that represent complex sets of information, like a world pandemic. So for instance, um, I have, as a jump thought, human rights and safety. And then there was also a, a guy on Twitter that was tweeting a lot about flattening the curve that I just found interesting. Um, so I've got him and I can click on him and I'd see his Twitter feed and of course content below. So in this particular section, you know, we've got everything from simple things like hand washing to, you know, articles on CNN. And the way this brain's put together is you can create a thought or you can drag and drop URLs and documents that create these thoughts. So in this case, hand washing is actually linked to a URL going to cdc.gov. And it's amazing how thorough you have to be on that. And there's, you know, kinds of fun articles like apparently uh, men wash their hands less, less often than women and then actually steps from the he, who organization as to you know how to wash my hands and as I'm building this and looking at things I can make connections so for instance I'm going to go ahead and just start typing the first couple letters in of the WHO organization and you can see it's going to pull up everything that's relevant so I've got a lot of stuff from uh, you know, the who uh, potentially not paying attention to Taiwan, to the World Org Organization, to essential medication list. So I might put this just directly under the WHO organization. So now this piece of information is living in multiple spots. And what that does is it facilitates the discovery of what would otherwise perhaps be overlooked if I just stuck it in a folder uh, and so forth. So, um, and this is where it gets interesting and where we can get in probably a little bit more with Jerry and Mark and into the information architecture. Um, and the general pat uh, pattern of creating a brain is you do create sort of a base level of categories, but then from there, it's, it's really up to you what kind of connections you make, what kind of choices you make in your categorization structure. Um, you know, and different approach, people will take different approaches. Um, uh, I love that Jerry was talking about on his video how he, his taxonomy gets built as it goes, as he's responding to the news. Uh, in our case, we did create some base categories that we were working with and, and built from there. So it really depends, you know, how you want to approach it. So you can see that we have he, uh, the WHO organization under local and world leadership and this is just an area that we thought obviously affects what's going on in global events we actually have different images of different world leaders and of course each of these world leaders is attached to their uh, relevant country so if i click on angela merkel um, you know i can go ahead and add more information on angela merkel if i wanted to or i can click on germany and see kind of what's going on and uh, germany is not only accessible through the navigation uh, at the top of the brain by region, but it's also classified as an area that has flattened the curve and, and done some nice jobs. Now, now in terms of my our choices here, you know, we've got an article, of course, on you know why Germany is is doing so well in terms of um, working with their uh, their their uh, their ill uh, population. So you can look at that, or you can go into other areas that are relevant. There's also a couple interesting companies, uh, pharmaceutical companies functioning out of Germany that are working on vaccines. Um, so the way uh, this particular uh, brain is set up is that we've got companies, we've got regions, and then we've got treatments and vaccines. So if I click on this RNA vaccine, I can see that it's actually a dual project by um, uh, two different companies. And this is the advantage of having multiple parents. And then of course I have it under vaccines. 
for coronaviruses, which takes me back under treatments and vaccines back up to kind of the top where we started from. So you can see how I kind of started in one area, then I went down to another area. So um, I just want to make sure no one's uh, gesturing to me. So I'll, I'll just stay in this area because this, this area I particularly liked mapping out because um, obviously it's a little bit more empowering to think about, you know, how we can, um, you know, treat and of course eventually conquer uh, COVID-19 with the vaccine. So um, the way this was set up is we have drugs and these are different thought types. So if I wanted to come in here and let's say there is a, a new antiviral that I want to put in, and I'll just call it that. I can put that in as it is, or I can go ahead and select a thought type. I can create a new type, or in this case, I can type something, a medical supply, a world leader, um, a trial vaccine, undefined outcomes. These thought types are giving me just an additional level of categorization be beyond the parent-child jump relationship. So in this case, I'll just go ahead and type that as a drug and then add it into the brain so you can see what that looks like and then of course i can build information and so for instance uh, in this particular drug um, there's a lot of information going on um, and we've got a wide variety of content attached to it we've got a uh, youtube video we've got different uh, content uh, as well and uh, we also have a nice thought here on clinical phases. So this is an interesting uh, other way of looking at information. So in this case, um, different drugs and therapies are in different phases of their uh, trial. So this is all mapped out. So if we want to look at what's in phase one, we can click on this and see, um, you know, different uh, different types of vaccines. One's a, D, uh, a DNA molecule type thing done by this company, or look at other vaccines. That's in phase one. If I want to jump over to see what's in phase three, um, you know, which uh, this particular drug is, I can go ahead and look at that. And so, Shelley, now um, is when that Oscar music would start queuing in okay. to uh, sweep you off the stage, so. <laughs> okay, really good. So um, it's very easy to add information. I'll just go ahead and add real quick. So for instance, if we want to add something on uh, the bioethics of compassionate use for new medication, I can simply come in here and drag and drop. So let me just go ahead and do that real quick. And you can see I've just dragged and dropped this PDF. Um, so that's how easy it is to add. Um, if I want to go out and get information on new drugs, all I have to do is go ahead and search the web. And uh, it's going to pull up my favorite search box or uh, whatever search I'm using. And I'm just going to move that over. It's on my other monitor. And I got, you know, I can get all kinds of news articles. And this is the other way we build, um, is there's an interesting article here in Medical News Today on this drug. So I can simply drag and drop this in. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking the barrage of information that is coming at me and I'm contextualizing it uh, in a way that makes sense. So there's a lot more in terms of, I'll just go to whole different areas in this particular brain that we can dive into. Um, and actually, interestingly enough, this is some of these areas like inspirations and accidental silver linings. Jerry has a section on this that's like twice as large, maybe three times as large. So, you know, perhaps that's a that's a great segue. Um, there is one other thing that I we did in this brain that's kind of cool is we also did some hyperlinks into the content. But I know Mark has that, too. So you can also click here and set up connections. Uh, and go ahead and move to that particular thought area in your brain as well. So that's kind of the um, basic overview of our brain. I don't know if there's anything else, uh, Matt or Jerry or Mark, uh, we want to cover in this particular section of this brain uh, before we move on to um, basically a much larger example <laughs> of brain on COVID. Oh, Matt, sorry, I yeah. can't hear you. You're yeah, I think I'll just share with everyone on the call today that this is a sample brain that you can download. Yes. So while we're sending yes. presenter over to uh, to Jerry, um, a lot of people were asking about this brain, and I'm sending out a link, www.thebrain.com. Actually, yeah, I can just throw it out here yeah, right COVID. now. So yeah. if you go, Excellent. while we're sending presenter, thebrain.com slash. And can you coach people okay. through how to maximize this the brain real estate on their screen in case they haven't figured it out? 
Absolutely. Oh, sure. So here I can move things around. I can make the brain full screen. And there's these two slider buttons. So if I want to make the plex area full screen, I can go ahead and do that. Or I can go ahead and also do the opposite. Like in some cases, it's actually the content that I might want to see. Um, like for instance, I'm interested in reading a CNN article. So I can actually drag um, this over so that the content, which actually is, you can see loading uh, quite a bit slower than the brain, um, becomes more prominent. And the other thing that's really cool is of course, I can adjust the size of the thoughts, the plex, bigger, smaller as well. Um, so if I wanna go ahead and it's a little hard to grab with the go-to, but you can see they're really tiny now. But um, you know that's another way to do this. Some people just wanna look at uh, videos. Um, we have actually Joint Council of Cardiothoracic Surgery. Um, all the surgeons, at, uh, heart cardiac surgeons at USC, they love looking at videos. So I can imagine a lot of them kind of have their brain in smaller navigation mode. And then the content over here becomes bigger. So Shelly, while she was showing uh, her brain, showed Larry Brilliant. So while I'm doing a little bit of introduction, I, I went to my brain for Larry Brilliant, uh, who was the physician for the Grateful Dead. Uh, the Grateful Dead, as many of you know, uh, were a band. Uh, they were all about bootlegging. They were part of the Bay Area 60s counterculture. So this, by way of showing you that, um, I met I met these guys 22 plus years ago when they were on their first press tour, and I was a tech analyst. And the brain that I'm about to show you is the same brain that I started that month when I met them when I got to start using the software. So I've really not had a, a multitude of brain files that some people do. I don't. Everything for me is deeply intertwined. Uh, and so what I'll show you here is actually connected all together in one brain file. Some of you might have seen a preview I did for this uh, particular webinar. Uh, so you've seen some of my COVID brains. So I'll try not to replicate that, but instead go in a couple new directions. <clears throat> I've just reached up to the pin board. This top area is called the pin board. Anything you drag up there stays up there and just doesn't move. And then at the bottom, you'll see there's a similar looking thing, but this is actually breadcrumbs. So everything I'm clicking on is scrolling off here to the left. Um, this thought right here is the nexus of what I've been collecting and doing around the pandemic, uh, but it's under, for example, the virus itself, which is a severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 or SARS-CoV-2, which is a coronavirus, but so were these. Uh, here's a human coronavirus 229E and OC43. There've been, there's even a Pacific salmon nidovirus apparently. And, and, and by the way, I am not a scientist, I'm not a lawyer, uh, my brain is just an incomplete view of what I see in the world. So take that uh, as you as you look around. This is definitely incomplete and a work in progress. But under here, I, detecting, tracking, and treating COVID, uh, effects of the coronavirus pandemic. But one of the, the nicer um, parts, of th I think, of what I've been tracking is resilient responses to COVID. Uh, so for example, um, there's a lot of COVID humor, and some of you have probably seen some of these, but uh, under COVID humor, I've got uh, the do, re, mi, basically taking the sound of music. And, and what's fun is I already had the sound of music in my brain. So I get the COVID version of, of do, re, mi, but I also have Julie Andrews, who is an actress and a singer, uh, and some of her movies, probably not, yeah, definitely not all, but she was in The Princess Diaries with uh, Anne Hathaway, et cetera, et cetera. And so I can go back down here and find resilient responses and get back on track. Um, I, I'm kind of going off on these little tangents just to show you how rich an experience it is to be adding things to a mind map that's been around for a while. And, and I was just having this conversation yesterday. I think of myself as a, as a leaf cutter ant who's busy mulching up the leaves and feeding a big fungus that lives underground in my nest. And, and because I created this fungus, I kind of know all of its topography and terrain. And it is a fun landscape for me because uh, I can walk around in it and tell stories and so forth. Um, so um, we had Larry Brilliant and I wanted to go toward uh, uh, things like, um, let me go up here back to the, to the main nexus. Um, for example, COVID is a gray rhino, not a black swan. Right, um, Nassim Nicholas Taleb got a lot of attention for his black swan idea, which is a really good idea. Uh, a friend of ours wrote a book called The Gray Rhino. Her name is Michelle Walker. Uh, she wrote this book, The Gray Rhino, that says, hey, we're busy ignoring obvious problems that are right in front of us, that, that are imperiling us, like climate change. And it turns out that climate change is not as quick or as deadly as COVID, so we're not responding to it 
but we're responding to coronavirus in a different way. But it, it helps reframe how we, uh, how we in fact see what's going on here. And then one of my favorite, favorite parts of this subsection of the brain is the question, might coronavirus and our response to it tip us into more functional economic and social systems? Might there be some good outcomes? So I've got this under silver linings, uh, which include lots of mutual aid uh, happening, which include the humor and, and things of beauty that are being done. But really, could it be that what we're going through, and for example, all the kids are at home right now. Most everybody's been kicked out of school and is trying to figure out how do we homeschool. And some schools and teachers are flooding them with homework. And there was a very funny uh, Israeli video of a woman screaming at her, at her phone, like, we can't do this. But maybe people are learning that their kids need some time to actually be curious and get bored and go pursue something in depth. That's, that's possibly a, a way that this might work out. Um, so we have how might coronavirus change social con contracts, which is, uh, for me, a huge issue because um, all of the protests that have been happening recently uh, mean that uh, we've been involuntarily renegotiating the social contract for a while because many people believe that the social contract is broken, uh, that young people today are going to do worse than their ancestors, for example, that capitalism is in crisis, that neoliberalism is a mess. Uh, there's a thought here, the system was broken before coronavirus, let's fix it. And then a, an article I just finished, uh, I think reading last, uh, last night about, uh, by George Packer, which is a, a lovely sort of punch in the gut that says, look, we are living in a failed state. And I tend to just put excellent. I, I don't really use the tags and labels in the brain. I just put the word XLNT uh, after things that are particularly good. And uh, just because this is where I wanted to head anyway, um, every now and then I create a best articles subcategory. So here's the here's the thought, articles about the COVID pandemic. And there's a bunch of stuff as you can see. Uh, and that's this is a tactic I have whenever some part of my brain starts getting crowded, I create a thought called articles about the, the topic. And then I drag all the videos, posts, news articles, other sorts of things under there. And then, uh, and then often I will have subcategories like here's something about preppers in the pandemic, et cetera. But then I created for this one, because there were some really beautiful ones, best articles about uh, the pandemic. So for example, uh, what will the world be like after coronavirus? Four possible futures by Simon Mayer. And um, uh, he basically writes, look, there's from an economic perspective, there are four possible futures, descent into barbarism, a radical state socialism, robust state capitalism, or a transformation into a big society built on mutual aid. And I'm not going to paraphrase the rest of the article, but this is really interesting. And uh, it's part of projections of the course of the coronavirus, uh, how long will it last, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I realize this looks like a thicket of things. This is a whole bunch of thoughts kind of, kind of tightly nested and woven. But as you can see, um, when you start to find similar things near one another, and then when you start to express kind of, I would, say, I would call it editorial opinion, like I'm, I'm asking, you know, some of the big questions. Uh, U.S. healthcare was unprepared and overwhelmed by the coronavirus. Uh, I followed Donald Trump. I've been following Donald Trump for a very long time, uh, not quite as long as he's wanted to be president. But you know, Trump was warned that a pandemic was coming many, 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 many times. And here's the evidence. And just yesterday, I was watching Dr. Fauci in a 2017 speech. Thank you, Judy, for for the link. Um, he did a speech in 2017 that, like a few other things that that one can go find pretty much say, hey, there's a pandemic coming. This is going to be terrible. We need to prepare. And my timer says I need to stop. So I'm going to turn the mic back uh, and uh, and we can hear from Mark. So thanks very much. Um, let me just give a little bit of background as to what we're trying to do with our COVID-19 uh, brain, because I've built brains like those described by Shelley um, and, and, and Jerry. Uh, so for example, our climate web uh, brain, which is really a collective intelligence for everything having to do with climate change, is just as terrifying as Jerry's brain in terms of being massively complicated, tons of information on the screen, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so what we're experimenting with in, in these brains, and this is a, one of a series of, of what we're calling external brains, and they're all available at yourexternalbrains.com, uh, is the question of, is it possible to create brains that other people that are really designed for other people to use. And so, you know, can you help frame the questions that they might want to explore? Can you make it easy for them to do that? And it's worth pointing out that we've all been displaying our brains 
on our own desktops as opposed to online, which is where many of you might access Brains. And it's a very different experience. So when you're online, you have to do a lot of clicking through to URLs, et cetera. And, and that's one of the real beauties of downloading a Brain to your own machine. And I'll show you some of that uh, in this case. So our, the way that we do that is that we actually build quite a bit of text and explanatory text into our external brains and graphics uh, so that it's, we're, we're trying to provide some information um, and, and help put, put things into context, help people explore and figure out what are the key questions that they might want to really understand and be looking into for a particular uh, topic. Now, what I'm gonna do here is go to the thing that I generally do first every day. Um, I go to my track it section of the COVID-19 brain. And what you can do, and this is the beauty of being able to download it because this doesn't work online, is that you can uh, simply hover over a thought, and Shelley showed this with Twitter and other things, you can hover over a thought and information will pop up right into the notes field. And then you can just go down and explore that uh, source of information, and this is, of course, one of the, the, the great uh, places to go for tracking day-to-day -day COVID-19 uh, changes. And you can take a look at the John Hopkins site, which everybody uh, really likes, and, and so it pops up almost instantly, as opposed to having to open a new tab uh, in your browser and then to come back to the brain. All of this can be done within the brain itself, which is a, a huge advantage. Now, one of the things that I'm really curious about is the issue of some of these different social experiments that are going on in terms of Sweden, for example. And you know, is Sweden managing the COVID-19 crisis very differently? And so this links directly to the, the Sweden data. Uh, and so you can just sort of see that their daily new cases and, and that their, their daily deaths doesn't appear to be a great uh, trajectory. Uh, but you can also then take advantage of this pre-populated Google search, which immediately calls up sort of what might have happened, the most, what are the most recent news stories, et cetera, having to do with COVID-19 in Sweden. And so you can instantly sort of go beyond what we've curated in this external brain and through many, many, many such pre-populated links into Google, into Google Scholar, into YouTube, into Vimeo, into Quora.com, you can do a huge amount of research on a topic coming up to speed on, on a question that is particularly relevant to you, and you can do it almost instantly compared to the other ways that you might want uh, to do it. And so, you know, there's a huge amount of information here. Whenever we get a great site, you know, we'll organize it in here, and I don't, obviously don't go through all of these on a daily basis, but there is a ton of good information here. Now, we can then jump into another area, sort of key questions, and, and these are sort of, and these evolve over time. What are the key questions that are, that are around the COVID-19? You know, how well do we really understand the virus? When will the U.S. have the needed testing? Uh, will we rebuild bigger and better? And in each of those cases, we've pulled in uh, materials, uh, links to articles and other things. And when you go into that, you can see that's here. You can go to the COVID tracking project and sort of instantly see um, state by state testing statistics that, that pop up, or normally they pop up for whatever reason it's taking a second right now. Um, or you can take a look at you know, individual news stories and see sort of what the data is uh, is saying there, and so we have this for impacts. Uh, you know, what are some of the different impacts of COVID-19? What are some of the different responses of COVID-19? What is some of the mischief being done around COVID-19? What's being sort of snuck through us uh, as, as behind the scenes as we're paying attention to COVID-19? What are some of the key futures questions? around COVID-19, and in every case, we've curated some information, but then we've also brought, brought in these, these uh, preset searches, and our brains through yourexternalbrains.com are designed so that you can download it on a read-only basis and take advantage of the fact that we're always updating these things, or you can actually download this brain, much like Shelley was talking about with their brain, and use it as your own platform for knowledge management. And that's really what we're trying to promote here is the idea that if people did better knowledge management, maybe we'd make better decisions 
in the world. And that's sort of what we're exploring. Now, I'm gonna wrap up by going to this search uh, button where you'll see a lot of different sort of pre-populated uh, uh, searches here. And, and some of these are uh, just Google searches, COVID-19 treatments. Some of these are Google Scholar uh, searches. And so you can see sort of what the professional literature is. Uh, you can jump to Quora.com, which is a great source of information on, on lots of different things and see what might be the trending questions uh, there. But what, then there's this also this interesting category of things that you'll see uh, right here. These are links into Jerry's brain. So you just saw Jerry's brain on screen. And instead of having to jump into Jerry's screen, uh, into Jerry's brain and starting to look for things, I simply have a link to exactly that spot in Jerry's brain. And you can actually explore uh, that part of Jerry's brain from within uh, the, the, our COVID-19 brain, which is really cool. So you, it's, it's linking brains together in a way that lets you take advantage of sort of the best available information resources that are out there. And that's what we're trying to pull into these external brains on a series of different topics, diabetes, uh, environment, climate change, other things to sort of experiment with this question of, of can we encourage personal knowledge management or individual knowledge management by designing these brains in a way that, that you know, are maybe less frightening. So we'll only have 20 or 30 thoughts. We don't have tons of parent thoughts and tons of, of, of uh, jump thoughts. We, we are sort of building mini brains that make it much easier to navigate sort of the topics involved with COVID-19. And let me stop there. Great, so right. lots of great questions coming in. Shelly, do you mind if I jump in with, uh, with a couple of- The only thing I have on? to oh, say ahead. <laughs> Jason's comment about when Mark was talking about linking to Jerry's brain, he said brainception, which I thought was very funny. I don't know for those of you who've seen the movie Inception. So yes, it's a brain within a brain. Uh, so anyway, and now uh, back to questions and, you know, we can pass the ball uh, accordingly. Thank you, Mark. We had a lot of different feedback and it's very interesting because a lot of people are like, gee, I like this brain because it's smaller and more digestible. And then other attendees were like, wow, Jerry's brain is like blowing my mind. So, and this is why we are presenting because obviously, um, you know, everyone processes information differently. Um, it's really up to you how you create your brain, but you can see just to kind of uh, bring it all together, the example of a brain that's literally connected to everything, um, which has its power in that universal context that's uh, literally, you know, the brain, one brain for it all versus something like Mark's doing, which is very tailored and uh, curated. And Jerry's is curated as well, but in a different way. So with that, we're going to hop back to questions we have a ton of them and matt go can ahead a, and kelly can i make a very can i just yes. do, do a very quick follow-up on that because the, sure. the reason we're actually doing what we're doing is that when we built the climate web which is this mm -hmm. huge brain we have we always get exactly the same response that is amazing this blows my mind in other words i'm never going to look at this again and and so that's that's why we're sort of experimenting with this idea right of is there a way to make this stuff a little more bite-sized? Maybe people by getting used to the bite sizes are then more able to deal with a more complicated framework. And that is interesting because people do process different information in different ways. And a lot of us are high information seekers or low information. Like for instance, I personally in my brain, I like to see a lot of child thoughts and use thought types and tags to delineate. Whereas Matt likes a cleaner brain on top with more subdivisions so sometimes we'll go back and forth and and that's especially something those are conversations you guys all need to have especially if you're developing a team brain and obviously um you know you've got some great examples for your own personal information uh management you can kind of you know take the best of both worlds um you know in that regard and so matt we do have a ton of questions i've started yeah. chatting them in um and i don't know uh if we want to direct some 
right away to Mark since he's got presenter or just go into Jerry's. I'll, I'll yeah, let you I think, I think Mark, since, since you ahead. have presenter right now, so many questions came in for both of you, but uh, Mark, uh, specifically, a uh, few people noticed that you have many different um, uh, brains. They've uh, been to your website prior to the, uh, to the webinar today. When do you decide to make turn something into a mini brain versus adding it to one of your larger brains, like your climate brain, uh, for example? Right. Well, in a sense, if they've if they've been to to, to your climate web doc or even your external brains, we have a gallery of images that we're characterizing as mini brains, and it's the same for this one. But but all of those mini brains are actually in the same brain. And so we have lots of what we're calling mini brains in this COVID-19 brain, and we're simply making it possible from the website to jump to a specific place in the COVID-19 brain uh, from the website. And we do the same thing with the, with the uh, climate change external brain. We have dozens of, of mini brains, actually quite different topics within climate change. And yes, you can go into the climate change external brain and sort of work your way through all of them, or you can simply click on the image at, at the website and jump to that spot in the brain. So we don't actually have as many brains as, as it appears, at least not what, what people have seen. Great, and uh, next, another question that came in, uh, Bruce Waltuck asked specifically, did you ever, were you the one that ever created a brain called Once Upon a Time? Not you, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Bruce, for the question. And, Actually, there have been a lot of questions from uh, Norman and Gregory or uh, on how, uh, oh, yes, Norman, I, 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 a couple people asked how you actually link to Jerry's brain. So I don't know if that's something we want Matt to get into, we can cover. They want to know, like, how did you actually embed Jerry's brain into your brain? And, and it's, it's, very, it's very easy if you, if, if you have Jerry's brain open in, in your browser. Uh, just like anything else, you can just drag the URL from that particular spot in, Jer in Jerry's brain into your own brain, and then you'll have a link into Jerry's brain. Great. It's and like uh, your notes so simple, are... you can invade my neural circuits. <laughs> Go ahead, Matt. And Jerry, your notes are very popular. How do you style your notes? Everyone loved your images and... Oh, you mean Mark. And Mark's also brain. Mark's Mark. notes. Uh, and Jerry's got the, the flex, Mark's got the notes. Together, yeah. they're a powerful combination. Yeah, and we're, you know, we, 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 we do a lot of searching for interesting uh, uh, images that are, that are royalty free, and we try and uh, uh, use them as much as we can to, to lighten things up and uh, et cetera. And so we're, we're, just, we're, we're trying to build something that, that interacts with people. Great. And it's worth pointing out as far as the notes, I mean, it's just like the brain can be used just as a note taking tool. You just type in notes, you drag and drop links. It's they're very easy. Version 11 has actually some some even newer bells and whistles. So, um, Mark, I don't know if you have any hyperlinks to other thoughts in your brain that you want to show us in your notes or if that was an earlier version. This brain is evolving constantly. So. It, it is, and in this case, uh, I actually took out a couple of hyperlinks yeah. earlier uh, today because I had a hyperlink into Jerry's brain, for example, and okay. instead I've just pulled it in as a direct uh, link. But yes, you can have all sorts of, of hyperlinks, um, uh, and just sort of, for example, that here's an internal link. You can right. explore key spots in Jerry's brain, and if I click on that, you know that pulls up a page uh, here within the brain. Uh, that that shows Jerry in a prior life, um, and and just explains what he is doing with his brain, and you know includes a video from another Big Thinker series, uh, and has his most recent uh, video that he just posted on dealing with COVID-19 in the brain, and then I can I can just backspace from this to get back to where I was. Right, and so that's the thing. The notes kind of almost because the, the visual interface is so powerful and, and interesting, people gravitate to that, but you just wanna point out and give a shout out to the notes because you can do a lot in the notes editor with hyperlinks and formatting and even linking back to thoughts as well um, for those of you that are into note-taking apps. 
Great. So, Shelly, did you have any right. other questions for, for Mark? Uh, He's got a bunch of Jerry I think questions let's, let's, too. let's move on yeah. to Jerry's. And I don't know in this case if we want to pass the ball back to Jerry because yeah. a lot let's of people ask the are questions asking and then about... we'll see whether it makes sense okay. to pass presentation. Okay, sure. sure. Sounds so, good. First question I'm seeing uh, George Mack asked, uh, what is the meaning behind your different colored thoughts? They notice some different colored thoughts, Jerry, in your brain. Yeah, I don't use many thought. I mean, many colors in my brain. Uh, most everything is default white. And then uh, I use yellow to call things out. Yellow basically means there's a lot over here. Come look at it. And it makes it easier for me to find when there's a whole bunch of thoughts, you know, lined up as child thoughts under some under an active thought. Um, so when I create uh, articles about blank, I always color that one yellow, for example. And uh, and and I have many types thoughts, types of automobile, types of disease, types of whatever. The types is always marked yellow. Um, but then I use purple when it's more opinionated and it's sort of editorial. So if, if, I, if I colored something like that, like purple, that means probably it's a slightly more controversial thing. It's not just a collection, but it's a collection with a point of view of some sort or some st a stronger will to it. And I don't use a lot of other colors. I could, but I don't want it to look like a rainbow. Um, so I'm, you know, so I don't have a, a sharp delineation between yellow and, and purple, but that's about all I'm using. Great. And of course, uh, Jerry, you knew the question was coming. I hope you did. How big is your brain and how long did it take you to make it? Yeah, so uh, last time I checked a couple of days ago is 420,000 nodes called dots connected by more than three quarters of a million links all put in by me by hand over 22 years. If you do the math, it's about 50 a day. Um, and I started using it a month before you guys released it to the public. So I got I got kind of alpha access or beta access to it and started, you know, and the brain that I was showing you earlier is in fact the brain I started back then. And Harlan said, well, why don't you start it with like Jerry and as, as the root node and then business and personal. And I was a tech industry trends analyst at the time. So imagine I had to track who invested in whom, who competes with whom, what products do they offer, all of that, which was beautifully easy to, to manifest, to represent in the brain. So it fit my job description perfectly at the time. Uh, and then just went off from there because uh, I'm curious about everything. So I started putting everything in the brain. Uh, so it's been slow growth, very, very linear growth over time. I think during lockdown, there was probably a, a, a hiccup up. I, I'm, my rate of, right. of adding things is probably bumped up, uh, but I don't know. I haven't really tracked it. And actually this is such a little, it's a funny question that I have to ask you, put you on the spot. Charles is asking, I've wondered for years what Jerry does for a living to maintain such a tremendous brain, invaluable brain. If he has a day job, he must never get any sleep. So <laughs> comment and question. Uh -huh. So he was, so you, you mentioned your tech analyst. And so I guess, how do you, where, how do you, what are your workflows to integrate the brain in what you do or do you have a allotted hour a day brain time or how do you build the I brain wish. into your life? Um, so I went independent in 1998. So I like to say that I've been independent since the last millennium uh, and I'm a consultant. I do speeches, I do consulting and the work sort of comes and goes and, and it's, it's been a fun life because I have the freedom to do with my time and my attention what I, what I am compelled to do, which apparently is to feed this brain thing a lot. Um, and, um, and I kind of really never, uh, I've never had a day, the question I ask people a lot is, when you see something worth remembering, when you see something really cool on the web, what do you do with that link? How do you remember it? And I get shrugs. And then my second question is, do you use the bookmarks feature in the browser? And everybody laughs. And a couple of people hold up their hands and they grin, grimace, right? And some people have spreadsheets, some people have some kind of weird hack for trying to keep the links or they feed a Pinterest board that's private to them or whatever. They're all hacks and, and I can actually locate things that mattered for me. So, so on the one hand, this is completely an obsessive compulsive thing that's a little bit like the, 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 the artists who make like dioramas of San Francisco out of used toothpicks. It is a little bit like that, but I actually think it's much more useful than that because I can actually locate things that were worth finding way back when over time and they're collected up next to the newer things about the same topics and so on and so forth. So this whole thing is a way for me to curate for myself but share out to anybody who's interested um, how that works over time. Mark. Oh, you're, Mark, muted. you're on mute. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, just a, a quick follow-up to that. 
because, I mean, Jerry's been using the brain for a long time. We've been using the brain for a long time. I've used many other knowledge management softwares over the years. I, I have to admit, I'm not looking for new management softwares at this point because I've got a lot invested in the brain. But what, what Jerry is talking about in terms of being able to pull in information, you know, I, you constantly are saying, well, what happened to that great site I saw, that great story I read, that great whatever? Because we, none of us can remember anything. You know, you, you'll see something great and tomorrow you'll have forgotten 80% of it and by the next day you'll have forgotten the next 80% of it. It's impossible. And so unless I personally think that knowledge management and knowledge management tools are, are sort of the key, a key, perhaps the most important key missing element at the high school education level, at the college education level, and in the professional world. If you don't have a knowledge management system, you I won't use that word. You're you're in trouble, and um, and I have a personal brain that has everything I've ever done and written, and it's a total mess because no one's ever going to see it. It doesn't have to be. Actually, that was a question for you, Mark. They were going to ask you if you had a personal brain. Oh yeah. Um, you didn't show it, so I'm glad you answered that question. That was. Yeah, that was yeah I've got a huge okay. personal brain, and it's got every PowerPoint I've ever given, given every blog I've ever written, and it's great because I will constantly find that you know i wrote that blog six months ago and i have no recollection of writing that blog but before starting to write it again uh because we do an awful lot of reinventing of wheels in the climate change space instead of reinventing it again i'll go into the brain and find it there and i joke and it's not really a joke that that if something ever happened to my personal brain which is backed up in several safe to deposit boxes etc that if something happened to all of those copies Retirement or Harakiri would be really the only options. Right. Let me add a, a little bit more to that question. It's a, it's a great question. Uh, let me go a little deeper in, in the same direction, which is um, I have a whole screed about how we are an amnesic civilization because we are not, we don't have good tools to share what we know, to collect up what we know, express it better, and share it with each other. So we're always scalloping along the surface. And we've outsourced our memories to Google. And I love Google. I still think Google's not evil. I'm on the naive side here, but I love Google. But we have outsourced our, our, our memories to Google, which is a huge mistake because I can find articles that were published 15 years ago that get no more inbound links, which means they get no Google juice, which means you won't find them on a Google search unless you're really trying hard and know it exists. But I've got it curated, right? That curation matters. And so, um, in order for us to bubble up from the primordial ooze that we've been sort of dropped back into as mere consumers, I think part of what we need to do is some of us should step up and start collecting up and curating what we know and sharing it out as much as we can in ways that are useful. Yeah, and that's why I hats off to both of you for making these brains public and so accessible to our users because we do see a lot of amazing brains and for obvious reasons um, people don't want to share the kind of entity some some people were commenting on you know well this political belief is that but uh, in in the quick Q&A and I said you know we're not actually censoring anything that is in Jerry's brain as far as politics or marks or whatever not not that they necessarily reflect the brain's view but the brain gets very personal and it's it's an extension of your views your philosophy of life your um, complete um, perspective. So um, if you actually don't have a section on, you know, politics or philosophy, I advise you to create one because it is, it is very illuminating and, and your perspective might even change in building these connections as well. Um, so that's just, uh, you know, very, to me, very interesting in, in seeing all these brains. And then actually Gene came in before we go and had a question, a comment on what the brains that he said, the brain isn't a utility that one uses. It's an environment that one learns to live in. So I thought that was kind of cool. So thank you, Gene, for that. And I'll, mm -hmm. lots of other questions. Jerry, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to add that, um, Wiki, I love Wikipedia also, and Wikipedia is really cool, but Wikipedia intentionally have some, has something called neutral point of view. Uh, now, a page might show controversies and might show opposite sides of the controversy, but it's not really allowed to have a point of view. And I think that points of view are really important. Uh, Alan Kay said point of view is worth 80 IQ points way back when. And so being able to have a perspective that you can articulate right. and show the evidence behind, I think it's essential. And I'm really interested in finding other people who can present their cases that might be very different from mine using a tool that doesn't have to be the brain, could be something else. But let's let's sort of do idea debate 
um, with a richer environment and with some of the evidence behind why we think what we think. And we're not mm -hmm. doing that. The best we have right. is an Oxford debate where there's a real, like a really literate person who says things and that's it. Following up very very quickly on that, in the in the climate change space, which is where I spend most of my my time, you know, what I find fascinating is that uh, you know on on any climate topic, you can go and hear a webinar on climate engineering or extreme events, and it's always the same. Uh, and it's it's you know there have been 500 webinars on climate engineering 101, uh, and and the question is, well, what if we could get to climate engineering 202? What if we could get to climate engineering 303? The problem is, is that you've got new people coming in. The, it, it, you never can because if you try and do that at a conference, half the people in the room won't have any idea what you're talking about. What if you had a mini brain, and this is what we have in, in our, in our uh, climate web mini brains. It, what if you had a mini brain on climate engineering 101? And what if people went to that before going to the conference and spent an hour coming up to speed on carbon pricing or coming up to speed on the necessity defense or any of the key topics, couldn't we have a more advanced conversation about the topic? And couldn't that actually get us closer to maybe making progress on a problem rather than constantly re, re, uh, doing exactly the same thing over and over ad infinitum? What Mark said. Great. And, and this, this is true. In, this is true in every discipline. This is where, and the news, the news is trapped because a good, a good, you know, evening news story is eight minutes long, in which they have to explain the issue, have a couple of cute quotes, yes. uh, you know, have a cute hook at the end. They do nothing. Like they're busy reinventing everything. We're just scalloping along the surface of everything, and we don't have the ability to do collaborative inquiry together because we're lacking the tools. Go ahead, Matt. Sorry. Well, I was just going to say we've got questions coming in that that uh, just really actually run. there's one question that's it's totally different, not on the technical track. So I'm going to pull it out of the a ton of questions, and it's from uh, Johans, and he says, "I wish we could get more into the COVID-19 topic and less into pure technical information. How the brain helps there, and what conclusions you're drawing from recent research of your brains." So we're going to now we. You know, obviously, it's a combo of the subject as well as the technical input implementation of getting it in the brain. But I, I like that because I'm going to throw it back to everyone, including you, Matt, as far as what you learned and how you felt actually mapping it out. And I, I started by saying, I mean, for me, it was it was illuminating seeing all the new drugs and treatments. Um, it's not just, you know, one drug that, you know, a, a certain leader is talking about or this or that, like there are so many and so many different vaccines. So I discovered that in my brain and that became hopeful. And I just typed in a search UCLA because I'm in Los Angeles and I had three different articles on UCLA and I linked that back up to a whole thought on what UCLA, um, you know, uh, alums are doing here in LA. So I've had a lot of aha moments and a lot of moments in my COVID brain that have given me pause. And the other area that I haven't, we haven't shown you is I have a section and I'd encourage all of you to do this um, when you download our brain, create a thought on family, what's important to you. Um, the reason I actually put in Canada for that brain is because my parents are in, you know, Edmonton, Alberta and Alberta has more areas. So you'll find, and that's the whole regional section. We debated this like uh, because the pandemic is global, but obviously we're human and we're focusing on, you know, you have family in New York, you have family in Canada, Matt's in Milwaukee. So I mean, in that way, um, we kind of, we, we created that section, but I want to throw that question back to everyone, including you, Matt and Mark and, and Jerry, and kind of mm -hmm. what you learned in, in mapping that type of content and how that's different from kind of other things you map potentially as well. Let me say a couple of things and then throw it back to Mark because we're getting close to the top of the hour and he's got his, his chair up. But as I started, you know, hearing stories about about medical approaches and you know, uh, does COVID intercept the hemoglobin's ability to take up oxygen? Is it an attack on epithelial cells? Are we over over ventilating patients? All of those things are super interesting, and it's yeah. not just about the drugs and the drug trial, but rather about the mechanism 
and the therapies being attempted on patients and who's learning what. And again, I'm not a doctor, but I have a couple of friends who just run way deep on these things and they keep feeding the articles, which I keep putting in the brain. But then separately, how do we make our way out of lockdown? Right? There's a lot of really interesting different proposals for the steps we should take to get out of lockdown caused by the coronavirus. Um, and you know the the, the hammer and the dance and whatever else. So that's super interesting. And here you can compare and contrast different countries' approaches toward uh, lockdown, et cetera. Over to you. And actually, Bruce just oh, to sorry. add, before you, I love the section in Jerry's brain on the hammer and the dance because I'd never heard that phrase before. So not only in creating the brain, but when I was browsing Jerry's brain, as with Marks, I've learned I learned a few things that obviously I wouldn't have found just going on CNN or in a Google News stream as well. So that's why they're out there for you guys as resources, because it is going to be a different format for you to, to digest this news. Um, we aren't a definitive news source or a news organization, especially the brain's brain isn't all, always up to date, not as up to date as these guys probably, but um, I do encourage you all to browse their brains so that you can have those moments and discover things that you wouldn't have other, otherwise found. And then now, Mark, uh, kind of back to you on your experience in particular with the mapping of okay. the pandemic itself. Yeah, and, and I don't know whether people can, can read that on the screen. It's sort of an interesting story of, of how the brain can help you integrate information that Patrick McKercher put together years ago and that, that I really uh, like. But the, the, the graphic that you saw up there, in a very real sense, I don't think COVID-19 is any different than anything else in terms of, you know, you've got Carla O'Dell, one of the mothers of knowledge management, if only we knew what we know. And, and Woodrow Wilson, there is no idea in our heads that hasn't been worn shiny by someone else's brain. And now with COVID-19, we're learning a lot every day. So it's not literally that we already know everything, but there's, just so much information out there. And what's fascinating is, you know, just like climate change, but with COVID, imagine if you had, if, if as an investment firm, you had a team brain with 20 different people responsible for, the, for each one being responsible for one of the 10 fundamental questions that will determine what happens in terms of how quickly will we come out of this? What are the unpleasant surprises that are waiting? What are the potential policy responses? If you manage that knowledge in an effective way using a team brain, I think you could do much better in your investment strategies because you would see things before other people see them just because of the way the information is organized on your screen. I don't think that's inherently any different for COVID-19 than other wicked problems. But it's certainly true for COVID-19 that, it, that you'll, you'll realize pretty quickly that there are 10 fundamental uncertainties that no one quite knows the answer to today. But if you can get a head start on those, you might come out much better off. And Matt, since you are also part of the COVID sure. brain, I got I to gotta get, I put you in the hot seat. Absolutely. What did you, how do you feel mapping? mapping our brain well we uh and that so uh so that everyone knows the brain that uh, the brain that the brain created the staff of the brain created was a collaborative effort so it was built by uh about i think eight or nine employees at the brain and everyone putting in their own information and it's it's um been interesting to me to for me to see the components that other people are interested in and sharing and Feel that it's worthy of, of putting it into our, uh, into the brain, uh, but I've also used it as a helpful resource. And and Shelley, uh, my example is sort of similar to yours. My parents live in Texas, and they were thinking, well, we'll probably start going shopping this weekend. I think things are dying down. And I really quickly just opened up the brain, went to the Texas Thought. There's a great graph there. It showed that new cases are coming in every every day, every day. I shared that information with my parents and said close the door, stay home. I'm going to order you some Amazon Fresh and everything's going to be fine. So that was sort of a real world scenario where I just got to the information that I needed very, very quickly um, in the brain. And um, I'll say that if anyone does download the, the brain we created, there's a link on our website. I've enjoyed putting together the silver linings area. Obviously, we can read about COVID and and uh, Dr. Trexler and Jerry, you've got some great, uh, also, you know, it's hard to say humorous, but just uplifting even uh, areas of the brain, which are rewarding to visit and be reminded of. 
sort of the the human spirit and people's uh, willingness to 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 come together and and look for the good in this bad situation. That's been uh, rewarding for me to see in all of our brains. And I like that independently, once we got our brains together, seeing that Dr. Trexler, Jerry, and the brain team all included those more uplifting areas of the in their brains as well. Yeah, I like the idea of getting beyond just the stats of, okay, how many cases, and that's obviously the heart of the issue, but, um, you know, there's only, I'm not a, a doctor, or, you know, I can't really do too much about that. So assimilating some of the bigger picture and helping explain to my family why flattening the curve is so important and things like that. Uh, Jerry mentioned the visual article, that's how flattening the curve became a section in our brain um you know and that that hopefully you know we're all doing our part in our own way um to to get messages out that we feel are important to to solve this and it, we are we're all connected and everyone makes a difference as we can see from this pandemic so um you know whether you're creating a brain on you know one little section of of your community or a large expansive brain um we have uh, doctors and government organizations using it to, on the front lines, but we also have users using it just to maintain their business um, that might be having trouble. So it's it's all relevant, and it, you know it can all be done and mapped out in a way that that gives you that context for empowering action. All right, so I want to be sensitive to everyone's time. We're on the hour. We do have uh, a lot more questions. Uh, I think we could probably go another five to seven minutes, but I, I want to be sensitive to um, our guest speakers, uh, Jerry and Mark. How are you doing I'm uh, fine. for time? You're okay? I'm fine. I'm okay, so uh, for those of you that do need to end, I want to be respectful of your time since we're on the hour. There will be a recording emailed to you. Um, we will also mail you all the links to the brains. If you go to our homepage and click on the banner out right below the the webinar plug, all the online brains are listed. We will send those to you. Um, and join us for Matt's 101 tomorrow because he's going to specifically talk about the COVID-19 brain and how you can customize it. Um, so we didn't get into how to build a brain from ground up, but if you're kind of just new to the brain and you're like, wow, this is amazing. I have no idea how to get started. That is the class for you. It's every Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern time. And it's a lot smaller. It's about a fraction of this size of this seminar. So every question does get answered. Um, and now we're going to go back to Q&A to answer more of these questions. And thank, thank you for all the questions, everybody. And thanks to everyone who can continue to stay. I guess we'll go into overtime until uh, our, our speakers uh, want to shut, shut the webinar down. We'll do 10 minutes. How does that sound? 10, 15 minutes? What do you guys think? Good? Are we, we're okay? Yeah, good. Okay. Let's get a couple more <laughs> questions right. in the room. Okay. So I'll, right. I'll jump in with a, a couple sure, of questions. Please. Yes, the recording will be emailed out to everyone that joined the call today. Um, also, yes, links to both Jerry and Dr. Um, Dr. Trexler's brains are on the website that that uh, that Brigitte mentioned. Feel free to send us questions. People want to know Jerry and Dr. Trexler how to contact you. So uh, there's links to your web pages from the the COVID page on the Brain website. Um, I'm assuming they can follow those links to go to Jerry's Brain, to go to the Climate uh, website, and and find ways to connect. They can also they can go to Jerry'sBrain.com, JerryMikulski.com. I'm easily findable. I'm Great. Jerry Mikulski on on Twitter. Great. And uh, also, I think because the it came up that I mentioned that um, our brain was a t constructed via team brain with a group of people. Everyone wants to know, uh, you know, Jerry's brain, the, the largest brain, uh, was there any team effort there? And Dr. Trexler, any teamwork in your brain or were they solo uh, constructed? So I'm the only, my, my answer is easy. I'm the only person who's put ideas, uh, thoughts in my brain. And in our case, I mean, we have a two person team that works on all of our different uh, uh, brains and we use team brain. For that, and and I'm 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 fascinated by the idea of of actually using Team Brain to integrate you know a hundred people working in a space, and but I've never quite been able to get that off the ground. Great, and um, also people want to discuss um, with one another. Uh, everyone that joined the call, they want to talk to not only the uh, presenters but other attendees today 
I'm going to send out, and again, in the email that comes out to everyone, I'm going to send out a link to a forum post where everyone on today's call can contribute to a forum post and uh, speak and share information with one another. Uh, and, you can also and do a contest. Twitter hashtag, too. Yeah. We'll probably have to come yeah, up. Yeah, so we'll Jerry. set that up. So look forward okay. to, uh, uh, to that email. Okay. And then uh, I think also the question that uh, somebody's asking was not, was also about your structure, like any thoughts or new sections in either of your brains that you're going to be building? Like, or do you not do it that way? Is Are you now working on more, you know, a section on more social distancing diseases and more, you know, what, what are, are there areas that you haven't put in your brains that you are going to continue to build in relation to uh, COVID-19? Um, well, in my brain, which I'm not showing right now, but I have a thing on the pin board that says new and improved areas, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which has been there since the start. And I always forget to curate that thought. So I just realized right this moment that the COVID section I just demoed is not connected to new and improved areas, which it ought to be. Um, and so there's a whole bunch of things like that. But but I tried to be aware of when I've just done a whole bunch around some new topic. So uh, a new and improved area that probably came up uh, eight months ago I, is a thought called my ahas about soil and growing or raising food. When I realized that I had a bunch of things about soil fertility, uh, bacteria, microbiomes, uh, fungi, uh, no-till farming, natural farming, permaculture, et cetera, and that they all actually were related. So I created like a little super node to, to connect them all. And that, that then really amplified uh, everything that had been kind of disparate in different places in, in the brain. So something like that. Yeah, th there is no such thing as a static brain. That's not what this this software is is about. So all of our the COVID nineteen brain is is changing all of the time, um, and you know either will continue to change it if somebody downloads it to use as their own as their own sort of seed brain for their own knowledge management program, then they'll continue to change it. But the the beauty of this is how easily it's it's changed and how easily it's updated. Uh, and so there's, there's, you would, you would just never have, I don't think, a, a, a static uh, brain. It, as the, as the topic evolves, it is very easy for the brain to evolve. And one of the things I've always loved about the brain, there, there are other visual search tools where what you're doing is you're searching document databases, for example, and maybe you have set operators, etc. But you're in search mode and you're just finding stuff. And if you're lucky, you get to annotate some of the things you find. Here it's not modal. I'm always editing. I'm always curating. It's very simple to just move something around and improve it as I'm busy searching and using it as a reference. So I'm, I'm not I'm not switching modes. I'm not publishing. I'm just in this environment that's always useful, but it's always malleable. And that's very different from a lot of other tools I've ever seen. And and just following up on that very quickly, the um, you know, a lot of people wonder, well, is this really just a bibliographic thing? I mean, I see that you've pulled in lots of news stories and books and reports. And this certainly goes for the the climate web, which which has a you know 100,000 thoughts and 200,000 links, and and it's got tens of thousands of, of reports in it. But what we do there is something we we don't do here in the COVID-19. We'll go into reports and we'll pull out the key ideas, the key graphics, and we'll put those into the brain separately. And so you know we've got thousands of graphics in the climate web that unless you've read hundreds of reports, you're never going to otherwise see. And then you can organize those graphics in all kinds of ways. That's sort of the, the a certain combination of graphics is going to be actionable knowledge for a certain person or audience. And the beauty of this is that you can organize all this stuff on the fly to make it actionable knowledge for almost anyone. And to build on what Mark just said, um, when I showed the demo of the one article that I really liked that was under best articles about COVID and the four different outcomes, those things are linked back up to where they connect into schools of philosophy, into you know political scientists, into uh, other sorts of things. So another a, a similar article was talking about how we're all Rawlsians kind of in some way, and the veil of ignorance and a bunch of other stuff. And I had those in my brain before, so I linked the article up into that. And other things don't really let you do that. All right, great. And then we had a question from Eric on does the brain have a mobile app? And uh, yes, it does. I'm just going to show it on my screen. And I'm also going to point out that about 70% of the brain was actually done on mobile 
uh, because I was busy chasing my kid around while I was working on this because I'm at home social distancing and preschool is closed. So um, yes, and uh, a nice feature that I absolutely love is our brain box. So as I'm scrolling through Google News, I'll just hit add to brain box and then I have it in my box and I can put it in or create a new thought. So, and then this syncs to my desktop, which then syncs to the web version. Um, and this, uh, this is great for ad hoc knowledge capture. Like I used it to create thoughts as well as add in articles because I'm constantly on my phone finding stuff. Um, you probably want the desktop to get into more advanced like thought typing and link typing and things like that. But I do suggest if you're a, you know, a news junkie and you're constantly wanting to save things to get the app. And even if you're just putting things into your brain box for future use, um, and we can cover brain box in our one-on-one -on -one session. Um, that's, this, is a, this is a great way to go. And you can see that I, you can click through this and it, it looks great on my phone. And it's, it's really fun to use on your phone when you're you know, out and about and not at your desk. So um, definitely give that a whirl. I know Jerry actually has his brain on mobile as an app as well. Um, so there are some resources there for, for everyone. And, that, and, and right. just following up on Shelley's, it, you know, the, the Climate Web is a massive brain, very hard to use on a mobile app. It's just, it's a bit overwhelming. That's one of the reasons that we're doing the external brains, which are actually very <laughs> easy to use on the mobile uh, app or on a tablet. And that's one of the reasons that we're experimenting with this is because you can carry this COVID-19 anywhere. And when you have five minutes, you can sort of update yourself on whatever the topic is that you might be interested in. All right, interesting. We have a, a comment from Gary. A term used in resilience engineering is sustained adaptability. The brain allows us to add new knowledge and make new connections to form new clusters. So yes, very interesting point, Jerry. Or, or Gary, and actually Jerry has a whole section on resilience in his brain too. So that's something that you could dive into. So I think we're um, kind of in overtime. So I think, are there any other final questions Anyone, uh, Matt, that you saw that we haven't got to? I know there's a lot of questions, but maybe a couple more that we want to get to before we kind of wrap things up sure, uh, for we, this session. Yeah, we did have uh, just so many questions that uh, unfortunately we couldn't get to get to them, but we will review them after the webinar and try to get back in touch with with everyone. And people are just making sure that you know how can they get in touch or find out more about uh, Dr. Trexler and Jerry, and those links will be uh, available again on our website. And uh, we're getting just a lot of thank yous at this point. So uh, I can't find a yeah, thank specific you. question okay. no, in general. That's great. So I, I guess what I'll do is we'll hand it over to our big thinkers. Any final words of wisdom? Um, there was a question about you know how to get started on creating a brain or um, you know how to anything that you'd like to pass on to all our attendees before we uh, close our session today. Um, and I'll, I'll start so Jerry can have the last word. Go for it. Um, the, um, yeah, that's actually one of the biggest problems that I think people have in, in starting to think about their own knowledge management is the idea that for six or seven or eight months, you know, they're trying to add stuff and they don't really see any benefit and, and, it, and it's this sad little brain. Um, and it's, I think for, it's a hurdle for a lot of people to get over. How do you, how do you start using it uh, and how do you add enough to it so that it has value? And that's sort of one of the things that we're trying to deal with, because if you access our type two diabetes external brain, for example, there, and, and if, you, if you download that and use it as a platform for your own diabetes management, you have a, an instant external brain that you can then easily change and add to, and you're, you're never gonna have this problem of how do I get started? And I think that's one of the things that we can help people do is get over that hurdle for getting started with with personal knowledge management, and maybe that that will re reduce the the sort of the barriers or the fear factor. Mm -hmm. It's funny, and I'll take the same starting point, which is how do we do this, and why do we do this, and how do we do more of it, and go in a completely different direction, which ties back to what I said earlier about how we're an amnesic society, and I'm trying to fi figure out why. My hair is on fire about how we're being spun and manipulated by people who figured out how to weaponize trust and facts and undermine our faith in science and journalism. And part of what makes that easy to do is that we don't have a medium that lets us share what we know well, and we're not doing enough of it. So why are more people not worried about this? 
because this is crucial to actually fixing civilization at some level. Uh, not that what I'm doing will fix it, but that if many of us sort of engaged in this process and helped a bit, it would actually be really fantastic all around. So a bit of a dark note, but but I think this is actually really important. This isn't about this isn't really about gosh, how might I save my bookmarks? This is about how do I collaborate to to improve civilization and to make my life better in different ways. So I think there's a there's a, a high place to shoot here. Great, and I think that's that's a, a great uh, final uh, note to end it on. Um, uh, I, I guess again, uh, we will get a recording. You will get a recording of this event, um, Matt. I don't know if you want to throw up the page really quickly that has the example brains. That questions popped up a lot. Um, uh, we'll go ahead and send the link so that we encourage all of you to uh, browse the examples or reach out to our uh, guest speakers, and we will be happy to share. Uh, additional webinars with you and maybe we'll even have these these guys back to dig in deeper into even more interesting topics and i forgot to say anybody who'd like to join me in conversations around the brain should go to insidejerrysbrain.com and just, read, just join the list it says you know join to be notified just join that and and i hold conversations using my brain in conversation in zooms uh all the time so join there and and just on a funnier note Gerard, uh, Gerardo just wrote in the background of Dr. Trexler rocks. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. I think here are the brains. <laughs> I think we're, you know, we're. Uh, so you go to. The, is there any other links you, uh, Jerry or Mark, you want us to throw up for for anyone? Or we'll, 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 for me. Okay. Well, thank you uh, to everyone who attended our session, and uh, special thanks to Jerry Mikalski and Dr. Mark Trexler for for sharing your words of wisdom and being, uh, to me, just very inspirational examples of of brain architects. So thanks for a great session, and uh, hope to see you guys again on a future brain technologies event. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, thanks Kelly. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. This is great.